Today, we are talking about how to live stream on YouTube. Um, we are going to focus primarily on using a hardware encoder. Yep. We're going to touch on some of the other things as well. Um, some of our viewers commented that they wanted to kind of cover some fundamentals about live streaming. And so this is probably the first in what will eventually be a couple of parts talking about the fundamentals. Uh, and we decided instead of trying to do one very long episode, <laughs> we would break it up by platform a little bit. So today we're doing YouTube. YouTube can be a great place in order to start off, learn, figure out what you want to do. Um, you know, there's lots of reasons why you might do it. There's also lots of ways to do it. And so we're going to touch on a couple of those again. Today's focus is with a hardware encoder, but what are some of the other ways we well, can do it? A great way to start, especially if, if you're kind of like an average consumer or maybe a social media type uh, individual, probably say the average is going to be either a mobile-based device like your cell phone, or you might be doing it from a web browser. Right. Whether it's a webcam, just using the web-based application through Google Chrome, um, and then also we're looking at other avenues like um, software encoders, which are very popular right. amongst uh, like you know Twitch streamers and gamers. And then, of course, hardware encoders. Let's dive into what are the first steps when we want to go live on YouTube. Well, the first thing you're really going to want to do is make sure that your YouTube account is enabled for live streaming. Uh, and one of the things you can do is go to your features page. Now, I'm right. just going to go ahead and go to youtube.com slash features. So live streaming would be this guy here. Uh, it is disabled by default, so you're going to want to go in there and make sure that you enable that. Now, this is not an immediate approval. This no. is a 24-hour process. Yes, it takes 24 hours after you click the enable for it to activate. I have seen it be less. It actually seems to be random. I think they say it's up to 24 hours, but they don't say up to, they just say right. 24. So I've seen people get it in an hour, four hours, six hours kind of thing. Um, but 24 is what I, I would expect. What that means is you can't just log into that page on YouTube, click the enable button, and immediately start live streaming on YouTube. You have to wait until it actually enables and there is that time delay. First step, let's let's step through this here. Let's uh, let's have you show us what the first step to create a live stream on YouTube looks like. Right. So you've enabled your YouTube live streaming capabilities. So there are <laughs> a couple of ways of getting to this, but today we're going to show you the, the quickest and simplest way to get to that, and that's just by going up here to this little camera with the plus icon. So you can go create a video or a post. So in this case, we're going to go live. Now, if you're obviously using a laptop, it's going to ask you typically to prompt for the first time to allow you for your microphone and uh, webcam to be used as a source. In this case, we're not using that. Nope. So, so we're going to end up going to this little stream icon here at the top. At this, at this point, you can create your title, whatever you want it to be. Uh, we're going to go stream to YouTorbs. And we're going to make this one public so that the, everyone can watch it if they really want to. And then... We're not going to tell you where it is, though. No. So we're going to go ahead and create the stream. So once the stream has been created, you're going to get this beautiful little window, <laughs> and it's going to ask you for a little bit of information. So this is the first time we've done it on this account, so this pop-up immediately appears. Once you've done this a couple of times, this pop-up doesn't appear, but that information is very important um, and is still visible, it's just they don't pop up with that reminder. Yeah, it's just down here in the bottom left-hand corner. Yeah. So one of the things we can just look at just from the beginning here, if we go up into the top right-hand corner, you'll notice a gear icon. Now, if you've enabled live streaming, but you haven't done things like allowing embedding of live streaming, you'll notice that there's an option right here in the top to enable that. Now, if you're going to enable the embedding option for live streaming so that you can put this onto your specific website, ensure that you do this before you time. start going live. <laughs> yeah, if you, you can't go, go back. <laughs> yeah, if you go live and then try to enable this feature, it won't become available until the next time you stream, anyways. Uh, it's also a great place to be able to enable live chat or disable it if you really don't want uh, commentary. Now, in order to be able to stream, you obviously have to take some credentials. So as with a hardware encoder and with most software applications, uh, they do require a stream URL and a stream key. So in this case, you're going to find all that information down here. So we have a stream URL and a stream key is available. One of the benefits, of course, to having this YouTube beta is you have the ability to copy this stream key without having to reveal that Why information. Why wouldn't I want to reveal it? Let's see. In our case, since we're live streaming this content already, if I was to reveal this information, 
someone could easily capture that information ahead of me before I can paste those credentials and stream whatever they want to my channel without my knowledge. And YouTube will also take the second connection to override the first. Correct. So not revealing your stream key is very important for security. The URL for YouTube, that part where it has a.youtube.com, you know, slash live two, never changes. No. That ingestion server is basically always the same. The stream key is your unique identifier for that instance. If you were to leak that, someone could hijack your stream. So never reveal that publicly. Ideally, never share it with anyone either, which is why it's hidden by default and there's a separate button to reveal it. And as Matt said, the copy button now works in beta, whereas before you had to reveal it to copy it. Which Absolutely. Is weird, but anyway. <laughs> now, some of the other things you might want to do before you start setting up that stream completely is obviously having access to that embed stream, being able to upload your own custom thumbnail so that you'll have an image ahead of time, especially if you're scheduling an event, I should say. Yeah, thumbnails can be very important. They're one of those general rules of thumb for YouTube in general, uh, whether it's VOD or live. People want to see something that makes sense or clickbaity or whatever in the thumbnail. We're looking at you, BuzzFeed. Um, if you don't upload a custom thumbnail, YouTube will grab a random frame from the video and use that as the thumbnail. The problem with that is it may not be a very... Um, flattering? Not, yeah, it might not be very flattering. I'll be honest, <laughs> I've got a couple of YouTube videos out there on my test accounts where I, it, the, the yeah, image is just I, me doing this. Yeah, it's just, so you don't want that. You don't want that. So you probably, especially if you're doing this for professional reasons, you probably want to upload a custom thumbnail, which, again, a little bit of time in your favorite graphic application, you can create a simple JPEG and, and upload that, and it'll be, it'll be great. We know that you can embed a specific stream on your website, mm -hmm. right? But as far as that embed code goes that you can retrieve for this stream, that's a one-time use. Yes. What would be the other option to do that? So the other option is you can embed essentially your channel ID. Mm -hmm. So you'd use a similar embed code to what YouTube will give you for a single event right. in terms of the code you have to put into your website. Um, but instead of using the video ID, which is a random string of stuff, you would use your channel ID so that any stream now, not any event, but any stream now that you create on your YouTube channel would embed. Um, so that's one way to basically have a persistent embed uh, is, is to do it that way. But again, it won't work for events. No. So it would have to be um, a stream now only workflow. Why don't we talk about how to set up a stream? Yes. So what we'll do is we'll start with setting up a stream, and then we're going to look at the encoding settings, which are equally yeah. important for any stream. So we've played with this stuff. What other information is in here that's valuable? Now, enabling DVR is obviously an excellent way to go. This allows you to obviously play back that content at a later date. Right, so that converts to, to VOD. To VOD. Uh, without that, essentially, the minute that your stream ends, it's gone forever. Right. That's on by default, luckily, um, but that is something. Now, another option is adding delay or latency. Yeah, so this is th something where, well, I think everyone's probably pretty aware that broadcast television uses de de delays so that they can do on-the-fly editing. Um, someone swears or there's nudity or yep. whatever, they have time to, to cut it out before it actually makes it to live. Um, this doesn't quite do that, but it does give you some opportunity <laughs> so that things are not instantly live all the time. Finally, there's also like an automa automatic closed caption. Now, in, in terms of uh, <laughs> Google and YouTube's algorithm, it's pretty good, but it's not perfect. No, the best way to use this is when you turn it on, it'll actually give you a URL to post the actual closed caption data. So there are services out there that can create the captions for you, and whether that's automatic or yep. whether that's a person typing them, and then they would their software that publishes closed captioning information, it's a little different from video streaming, but it's data streaming, would use this URL to send the caption data to YouTube, and it would ingest that and display that. The other piece here would be latency. Yeah, so the, the latency, which is just... You scroll down a little bit there. Yeah, There's there three different types of latency on YouTube. Normal is the default, of course. Um, low and ultra low. Um, if you're going for really rapid interaction from your, from your viewers, and you're very confident in your connection, low and ultra low latency can give you some advantages.
Now, we've got a couple of other tabs here. One section here is for analytics. Now, this is information that you would typically get after your stream has ended. You yeah. can also get some of that information while the stream is live. But yeah, it'll show your active, connected viewers and so on. Um, yeah. And, and then the, the average time that people, you know, un until they got bored. Yeah. <laughs> when, when did they leave? Yes. And the um, last but not least is obviously the stream health section. This is an important troubleshooting one. Um, when we start sending data from this Perl to this stream we're setting up, it's going to tell us a, some information here. It's broken it down to be very basic, but there's a log, which right now there's only one entry saying there's no data, dude. This is a great troubleshooting step when you're going, hey, I don't understand why am I getting all this weird buffering on my YouTube live stream? Check your stream health. If it says bad or warning, that's why there's not enough data coming in. So this can be a great troubleshooting step. So why don't we set up a stream? Sure. So going back to the stream settings section, we've got our stream URL and stream key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that stream URL, and we're going to go ahead and jump into our Perl 2 web user interface. So when we're looking at our encoder, obviously there's a lot of different things here. And the first place we want to start is our encoding settings. Basically, whatever bit rate you want to use, you need to be able to do 1.5 or times 2 of that bit rate as stable upload bandwidth to really be successful at that. So for 1080p, which is what we're going to attempt today, yep. YouTube recommends somewhere between 3 and, or is it 4 and, and 9 megabit? Ab about that, typically. Usually yeah. 5, 6 is the target that you're really aiming for to have decent quality at 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to abide by those rules. There is a little bit of room for flex, but it's just what's recommended in order to have good quality. Exactly. So the first thing we need to do is set our resolution. Um, so on Perl, there's a way of doing an automatic one, but if you're doing any mixing and switching, you want to turn that off and have a fixed one. Right. So, so we're going to go ahead and use a fixed one. So we're going to use 1080 as our fixed one. YouTube also recommends a keyframe interval of two seconds. So we're going to go ahead and set that quick cliff notes on keyframes, that's how often you're sending a full, complete frame as opposed to a partially interpolated frame. As a reference. So, yes. Uh, limit frame rates, I guess today we're going to be doing 30. We'll do 30. We don't yeah. need anything else with that. And then our usual default, we like to use 5 megabit as a good medium. It's a great place to start. Now, YouTube is also very particular about its audio encoding yes. settings as well. So where it might default to AAC48, we know that YouTube loves AAC44 kilohertz and it likes having an audio bit rate of 128 kbps. Yes. Now, there is some flex in some of these settings, These are, but these are the common ones. So that's there. We've set up our Perl. We saved those settings. Now what's next? Next up, let's create our stream. So in the channel streaming page, we go to stream to server, which will be streaming to our content delivery network. We're going to click on RTMP push because we want to crea create a stream to mm -hmm. YouTube. Uh, you can rename this if you so choose. I'm going to call it UT, UT or YT for YouTube. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste. And then we're going to ask uh, our producer, Michael, today to move to our super secret uh, layout um, because we're going to copy the stream key and we're not going to let all of you know uh, what it is. <laughs> because we want to maintain that privacy. So let's hit apply on that. You guys can't see our stream key. This is important that for Perl users, Perl stores a stream key in plain text. It does not star it out the way the YouTube interface does. Right. So we've created our own layout for this stream to block out that chunk of data so you guys can't see it. Um, but again, it's important to make sure this is information that you don't generally share with people so they don't hijack your stream. Now the other thing you will have noticed is I didn't put anything for the username or password. Most content delivery networks, like YouTube or streaming to Facebook or to Twitch, don't, do not require or even want you to really put in a username or password. So let's collapse that and let Michael switch away from <laughs> that layout um, so that our super secret uh, stuff is, is hidden. Perfect. Now what? The next thing that we can do is hit Start. Now, contrary to what you might think, this will start pushing the information to YouTube, but it won't automatically start the stream. OK, so what does that look like? So if I was to press start, there should be a count up timer. Should happen in a second or two. OK, so there it we goes. Go. So now when we go over to YouTube, what do we see? Probably nothing yet. Now, keep in mind that when you're pushing data to any content delivery network, there's going to be a little bit of latency or delay yeah, between the time that you start saying or doing something and the time that you see it anywhere. Absolutely. So as an example, everything well, that I'm saying right now has already happened about 30 seconds <laughs> yeah. ago. But I can see already right away 
that even before our video preview populated there, YouTube started reporting that there was an excellent connection because the stream health kicked in automatically and said, yep, everything's running great. We're getting the data we're expecting. You're perfect. Now, we're going to click on stream health just so you can take a look to see what you would typically see on YouTube in the dashboard. So again, you can see the log updated there and says everything's healthy. It's giving us a green excellent indicator. So we know that we are not running into any bandwidth issues streaming at five megabit uh, from this. And current viewer base is zero. zero. It went no to one knows this channel exists. Correct. <laughs> and and then, then finally, when you're all set to go, in the top right-hand corner, it's a go live button. So that's what you were mentioning earlier. Although Pearl was sending data to, fa to YouTube, it was not, in fact, live on YouTube yet. You can preview it. You can maybe make some last-minute adjustments. It doesn't actually go live on your channel until you hit that go live button. One of the things that we've found is that even though you might create a scheduled event, as we referred to earlier, for a specific date and time, even at that specific time, YouTube won't automatically go live. You still have to click the go live button by default. There is a setting buried. Now, I haven't found it in YouTube Live Beta yet, but no, on the classic, classic side, <laughs> that does allow you to enable and disable this feature. Yes. If you disable this feature, when you hit start on Perl, it will automatically start streaming live to YouTube. This button, sync to preview, when you have that checked, as soon as you start the preview, which you can start whenever, you're immediately live, no matter what. So which we don't recommend in general in case there's no. any other things that you need to troubleshoot for whatever reason. Exactly. So those are some of the basics. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I'm George. I'm Matt. I almost said that reversed. That would have been really <laughs> funny.